I'm a little nervous today because I'm actually here to share with you a very personal story. It's a story that started with my search for happiness. Today, we live in a world of abundancy, a world which has more possibilities to create a life of happiness than there has ever been before in the history of mankind. How many in here would agree with me that we have more possibilities to create a life of happiness? Please raise your hands if you agree. See, it's pretty much most of us, like, love to see. And yet, I was living a life with no meaning, trying to get by on a daily basis. And while I was happy from time to time, I missed this inner feeling of deep happiness. So I started to search. I read books about happiness, personal development. I went to seminars and speeches, just like this one, looking for the key to my happiness. And today, there's 140 million hits on Google if you search for books and happiness. All of them is trying to tell us how we can find happiness in our lives. And if it wasn't for a decision I had to make in 2008, I might still be looking, hunting for this key to my happiness. In 2008, I had to make a choice whether to start a company or go to America to live an old dream. A dream I've been hiding for 12 years out of fear of other people's reaction. And here you are. Here you are, ladies and gentlemen. This was my dream for 12 years. Simply to travel with as few possessions as possible and no money. To live like a vagabond or a leather tramp, as we are called on the road. You can imagine what life on the road sometimes can be hard and most of the times it's actually far from pleasant. Basic needs like food suddenly becomes hard to come by. Like in this situation, where I was spending seven days in LA National Forest with no food at all. And this picture is taken by day five. As you can see, I'm starting to look a little hungry at this point. <laughs> Sometimes you have to handle nature. Like here, where a bear walked into my camp. And while nature can be dangerous, it's around people I felt the most unsecure. I've had people trying to run me over when I was hitchhiking. I've been chased out of a city by a cop. I've been robbed by a traveling partner I lived with for two and a half months. A guy I trusted with my life in some situations. But the most unforgiving thing you have to handle on the road is the weather. Mainly because you only carry very limited and low-tech equipment. So a storm front like this one, where it rain for five days straight, really tests your will as everything you own, including your sleeping bag and your boots, are completely soaked by day number two. And with no direct access to a weather forecast, you have no idea when this is going to stop. You really just have to keep on going. Or a snowstorm in Sierra Vista, where the temperature suddenly dropped from 16 degrees to minus 5 degrees Celsius overnight. And the warmest clothes you own is a t-shirt and a jacket. So in a world where some people get depressed by looking out the window just to discover it's raining. I should have been one of the most depressed persons in the world when I was sitting under a rain cover with uh, eating a piece of wet bread I just dug out of a dumpster. So how did I stay happy and motivated in situations like these? I'd like to tell you a little story which I think illustrates it good. It's a story that starts in El Paso, El Centro, 
Oh, El Paso, which is a city in Texas on the border to Mexico. Here, me and Danny, which has been my traveling partner for two months, was in a bad shape. I had diarrhea after living on 10 cents instant noodles for a week and bad hygiene. Danny, on the other hand, was in an even worse shape. He had broken a tooth, and because of an exposed tooth nerve, it caused him a lot of pain. But we had to leave it untreated, because we had no money, we had no insurance. And emergency rooms in America don't handle tooth problems. So, so Danny asked me if it was okay for him to go and shoot some nerve medicine into his arm, together with some other drag, drug addicts we met the day before, in order for him to dull the pain. We've gotten the nerve medicine from a ride two days before, because the driver felt sorry for Danny. So that evening, Danny sat down with the other guy and started to fix. And he, they spent the night in a drug rose. Something really brought bad, bad memories for my former life. The next day, we left El Paso in the back of a pickup truck. We got dropped off at a local Mexican restaurant. Here we went in and asked for some food. And we got put to work picking up trash and cigarette butts. The, the owners, a local Mexican family, were so impressed by the work we did. But they rewarded us with a big platter of Mexican cuisines. And a customer in the restaurant gave us $10 for our continuous journey. That evening, me and Danny sat down and enjoyed a cigarette. We had our bellies were full. We had money in our pocket. And Danny's tooth didn't hurt anymore. So while the sun was settling in a blaze of fire over Mexico, we were just sitting there, being grateful for everything that has happened to us on this day. And just as in any other lifestyle, whether it's in work or raising a family, or living on the road, there's always so many great things happening to us. And the opposite is just as true. It's really up to us to appreciate the great things, to become present by noticing and becoming grateful for all the small things you experience on a daily basis. And that was how I turned some situation that seems bad into something good. And while it was one of the greatest learnings I had on the road, it was not the key to my happiness. The key came when I realized that we are all unique. And therefore, I couldn't find the key to my happiness by looking at what other people did. I had to look into my own heart and to discover that the way to my happiness was to accept my dreams and to start living. To accept that my dreams are unique and therefore also different from everyone else's. And that, my friends, that was the key to my happiness. Let me say that again. The key to my happiness was to discover that my dreams are unique. And I have to start living them. To stop copying other people's dreams. To stop copying a lifestyle from a book. And please, use my story as an inspiration. But don't go out and try and copy it. Because <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> and no matter what you do, you'll never have the same experiences as I did on this journey. Because happiness is unique for all of us. 
And it comes from inside our own heart. So I challenge you to go out and stop downloading your life. Start to become grateful for all the small things you experience. Accept your dreams. Find the unique key to your happiness. And go out and create a unique way of life. Thank you very much.